You're listening to Online Pet Health Podcasts with Dr. Megan Kelly, continuing education for veterinarian rehabilitation therapists. Learn more at OnlinePetHealth.com. Hey, Vet Rehabbers. It's another one of my Behind the Vet Rehab Practice podcasts. And this time it is with Ana Lloyd from Online Pet Health and Caddy Charles. They speak about Caddy's horse, Mayhe, I hope I pronounced it right, her journey and about how she has grown her practice using social media. Now, Caddy has a Facebook page called Vet Physiophile and it's P-H-Y-L-E and it's amazing. She has got 24,000 followers. Her greatest advice about social media is to keep it organic, post what you feel and think and want to learn or teach, not what you think others are looking for. And she says, don't plan too much and try too hard. She is an equine mobile vet rehabber and she's based in the UK. She shares with us her plans for the future and about how she started a Patreon page, what about wanting to do some more lecturing and overall just helping more owners learn how to do groundwork and develop a feel and understanding of their horses. Now for those of you that have a mobile clinic, whether you treat small animals or horses, we have a great download for you. It's called How to Give Your Mobile Practice Wings. Online Pet Health members, you guys can access this in the Business Basics area of the Members platform. And for non-members, you can download it by going to www.onlinepethealth.com forward slash mobile. I repeat that, www.onlinepethealth.com forward slash mobile. I think you guys are going to really enjoy this interview. Over to Ana and Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Thanks so much for joining me today. Yes, you too. (laughs) Have you had a lovely day so far? Yes, it's been nice. The weather in England is a lot better. So we had a bit of a cold spell. It was very frosty. We even had snow a week ago and um, it's much warmer now. And I am here for a really a much better weather. Um, so yeah, I much more enjoy more working in this type of weather. But yeah, I've been very, very busy. <laughs> very busy, hey? Yeah. And before we dive in, um, I must ask, how is your horse um Mehi Mehi so, yeah Mehi he is he's doing well he's so I went through a bit of a difficult patch with him probably about a month or two months ago mm-hmm. um routine changed the yard I was at it just wasn't suiting him and he just became very difficult and he is very sensitive everybody knows that anybody that knows me and him or even heard of him knows how sensitive he is so um he for sure tells me exactly what the problems are um so I've moved yards he's really settled he's got loads of new friends and uh, he's just loving life at the moment so he's doing really well hoping to crack on with some competing this year I competed him at a low level last year but this mm-hmm. year I'm hoping to kind of go out and do a few more um go out to the gallops again because he, he loved that last year um but he's really happy so I'm happy I'm less stressed when he's stressed I'm stressed so I'm, I'm okay at the yeah. moment <laughs> Okay, fantastic. I'm really glad. I was going to ask you if you are competing um, and what your plans are for that. So yeah. thanks for answering me. I'm yeah. really excited. Really yeah, well, I'm excited and nervous at the same time. <laughs> he's actually very good to compete. He is really good. He just, he, I, I've never, he's never competed before and he saw white boards in Dorena, everything for the first time, did not bat an eyelid and just oh. went down that sense line and was like, right, let, let me do my job. I've got this. And he's really, really good. <laughs> But I, I do have this little thought in the back of my head that maybe at some point he's going to realise, hang on a second, I don't have to do this. <laughs> or I can be, I can maybe be a little bit more difficult for my mummy. I don't have to be this easy. <laughs> oh, no, oh no. I bet you he's loving it. Like they love to do their yeah, work. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. He does love his work. Bless him. <laughs> Good. So let's chat rehab. Yeah. Um, when did you qualify? So I studied from 2016, 2020, does that make sense? 2020, yeah, that year. Um, and so I qualified, I finished qualifying last year um, mm-hmm. in July. And yeah, so I mean, the last few years of my degree were quite complicated um, mm-hmm. because of obviously COVID stuff. But um, I haven't had a graduation ceremony yet, which is quite upsetting, but hopefully it will be the end of this year. Um, but yes, I graduated in July 2020, and that was with a BSc in veterinary physiotherapy. Oh, fantastic. And yes. so you've only been working for under a year. It hasn't even been a year yet. Yeah. 
And how are you finding (laughs) working out? How's it treating you? Oh, I love it. It's great. I, I, well, originally my plan, obviously when you study at uni, they tell you to do a business plan and kind of plan for your, uh, your future career. Mm-hmm. And in my head, it was going to be the first year of my degree of, of you know, being qualified was going to be working part time and then mm-hmm. doing extra research or maybe an additional course or me, he obviously, or his, my life is filled by him. Um, and that was going to be the plan. But kind of from after my first month of starting up I was pretty much working full-time and I think now I'm working kind of more than more than full-time hours um did not expect it um but it's great I absolutely love it I've met so many amazing horses and clients and it's just the most rewarding job so you don't ever feel like you're working because it's so rewarding Hmm. it is and and I also I love the people like the clients are just they're always amazing you know and I think that um if we were in a different part of animal health and welfare then people aren't always amazing we can't, like the vets kind of see the worst people sometimes mm. and we just see the best people I love it I love it so I think yeah. that's a very big blessing <laughs> absolutely yeah I think the people just make it I've made so many amazing amazing contacts and friends um and just like because everybody shares the same passion as I'm very fortunate in the fact that the clients that I tend to get um tend to be ones or, or are already in the place where they want to do everything for their horse they want nothing less they will do absolutely anything um and that means they're so dedicated they they want to learn more they want to understand more um they're passionate um and it's just it's the most amazing people to work with and then you have a horse that needs help and the owner is that dedicated you know you've got to give them credit for it because you know it's it's heavy it's really i mean i it's, it's good it's for us it's you know it's, it's fairly straightforward in terms of we go there we see the horse we give the exercise prescription we treat what we can see and we help them on our side of things but that owner that's their that's their baby that's their, their child at the end of things and um, they go home bearing the weight of the fact that their their horse isn't 100 percent. so it's very heavy um so it just makes it that much better when you know owners take it on and and are so amazing <laughs> I agree with you. Do you only treat horses or do you also see some dogs? So I would say my practice is probably 90% horses. I, whenever, when I qualified, it was going to be a case of, it was going to be an equine practice, but the dogs that I treat are, uh, I normally only take on dogs that are quite advanced in terms of they, they don't, they need specific care. Um, Mm -hmm. So I have, I currently have two dogs under my care. Um, one is a very severe osteoarthritic little terrier. And then I have one, which is an incredibly interesting case, who is a ex-sledding dog, an ex-Canadian sledding dog, who has been brought over to the UK. And um, he has a lot of uh, sort of fibrotic muscle damage sort of thing from wearing the harness. Um, and has caused him some sort of long-term lameness issues. Um, so the, he's a very interesting case. So yes, those are, those are currently my two dogs and they tend to change, but I tend to only do them when I come across a horse owner with a dog because horses have always say, been it. Yeah, absolutely. Say, yeah. Say, they all belong to horse owners. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Clients. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, that is exactly it. <laughs> yeah, it can be a bit hard to say no to them, right? Exactly. You know, the dogs say, I can't say no. Of course not. <laughs> oh, great. So you have quite a strong online presence as well, right? Yeah. (laughs) I must ask you, where does Vet Physio file come from? Yes. So, oh, this is rather random. Um, So my mum is Greek. So that's where the file comes from. But essentially, when I started the profile, the way, how it came about was that I am a perfectionist and I am constantly setting the bar higher and it was a problem at uni because I would never seem to acknowledge that there was any type of success. <laughs> Every time I did well, I'd be like, cool, that's what I wanted, next thing to move on to. Um, I sat down with my lecturer one day and I just basically was, you know, I'm, I've, I'm trying to do this assignment, I can't do it. Um, I've, I've been working on it, I just feel like the quality is good enough. And she said to me, you've done a lot. Yeah, this is really, really good. And I said, no, it doesn't feel like it, it doesn't feel like it. So she said for me to set up my social media profile on Instagram she said look just set up an Instagram page 
and take a photo every day of what you're doing so that you can then see at the end of the week you actually have made progress and it's not just your head making things up oh so I ignored her for ages of probably months she was telling me to do it and I was just no no I haven't got the time for it it's not going to do anything and then I went again to a meeting with her and she said I really recommend that you do it and I thought oh gosh fine okay I'll do it so I did it and I didn't really know what to call it but I thought it's going to be a collection of all of my sort of bits that I'm learning about and it's going to be about vet- veterinary physiotherapy um I searched there was very little accounts out there if there were they were all qualified people so it was all their name and then veterinary physiotherapist the end of it so I thought I'm not going to do that um so the vet physio and then the file means sort of like clan or collaboration so I thought it'd be like vet physio and then file is in like a document file but also file as a greek is in being sort of like a collaboration of everything and i just sort of like i don't know i searched it and it came up and i thought oh yeah that, that works quite well i, I promise you in, in less than five minutes i've made the decision i was like yeah that'd be fine cool typed it into instagram yep it's available went for it i didn't expect it to become such a big name <laughs> that now every single time i come across somebody they go how do you pronounce it where did it come from and it's all really interesting and it took me about five minutes just to go, okay, right, I need to set up an Instagram username. Um, and we have to think about words. That word just popped up. It was like it was meant to be. And I went for it. I love it. It's brilliant. And it Thank works you. really well. And it's very catchy. So, yeah, good job. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I mean, I've been following you for quite a long time. So definitely from your student days, but obviously not from the beginning. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, your your uh, presence online really just exploded like how did that happen how do you find that do you think that's why you kind of went from basically graduating to working full-time yeah absolutely I do attribute a lot of sort of the, my busyness now to having an online presence I think that especially in modern times it's it makes it, it makes you more accessible makes you more relatable um but it was never an intention of mine to become I mean so popular um I started, like I said, I started it completely organically. And I think that's kind of why it did so well because I didn't push it. Um, and it was never something that I really wanted. And I'm not, I'm quite an introverted person, believe it or not. So um, I never, I just wanted to kind of share little bits. And then I realized that I guess I unknowingly had exploited a gap in the market, um, mm-hmm. not only for other students, but for owners wanting accessible information. Um, so it's pretty much started off with being, a few little posts and then I remember I posted a video of Charlotte Dujardin riding I believe it was Olympia with Allegro um purely because I love watching things back and I watched her tests and I, I I'm a massive fan of Carl Hester I've been to his yard and I thought you know what it was really late at night and I was half asleep so I was watching it on BBC iPlayer and um I thought, you know what, in this time in the morning, I'm going to want to replay it. And I can never go back and watch the replay. Um, I can never find the right spot. So I thought, you know what, post it. I can go to myself tomorrow morning. I can watch it and it'll be all good. Um, loads of my friends wanted to see it. But I thought they're all sleeping. What I'll do is I'll put it on Facebook. Because this originally I only had an Instagram account. And then I had more and more people say I should do a Facebook account. Mm-hmm. So I created a Facebook account. And then it was only, I think, a month or so into creating this Facebook account that I posted this video. Um, and then I remember it was at about half ten at night, closed my laptop down, went to bed, woke up in the middle of the night. And I thought, what is that light? <laughs> it was my phone. Obviously, all the notifications were coming in. Um, obviously, I'd posted it at a time where other people were waking up at different time zones and watching it. So it was just then being boosted. And then people in the UK woke up the next morning and then boosted it up again. Um, and I saw it and I thought, oh, I'll just, I'll just turn my phone over in the middle of the night. I, just, I went back to sleep and I woke up the next morning and it was on half a million views. It was just, <laughs> honestly, I couldn't unlock my phone. I couldn't do anything. Um, my, all the notifications kept coming in. So I thought this is a bit of an issue. So I had to log on to my laptop to then sort everything out on my Facebook page update one notification so I could, it, they would stop coming in on my phone swipe my phone put my phone in airplane mode because it was it was becoming that bad <laughs> madness absolute madness and I mean it didn't come without the negativity obviously every time you post something on social media you're going to get negativity um 
but it did explode and my Instagram account must have had a few hundred I think my Facebook account again had a few hundred and then it kind of went from a few hundred to a few thousand literally overnight um wow. and then I just thought people would be following because they maybe got misunderstood my profile they didn't realize that I wasn't just a dressage rider so they I thought maybe that they'd see that my profile was actually about student veterinary theater busier things and the oh that's right I'll just unfollow a little bit but it just incrementally like every single day the number would double um and so I thought okay I'll just continue posting because people really seem to enjoy the fact that I've just posted a muscle revision card and people love to see that so I just went with it um and lo- loads of people have, have stayed through the journey I have people messaging me like I followed you right from the beginning and your content has pretty much always stayed the same um because I've always always been so organic so it did blow up Mm. and I thought maybe it'll quieten down and it never did (laughs) could be in a consistent kind of upheaval from then um and initially it was great I thought okay initially I thought this is a bit mad um but then I was like okay this is great this is this is cool like loads of people are interested and obviously with the popularity comes a load of negativity and I've had so many low points and so many complete opposite complete high points um and like I say it doesn't come without it but it has been really rewarding and it's 100% um been a a massive influence as to why I've been able to get a good client base from the get-go that's absolutely incredible like absolutely incredible without (laughs) a strategy without a plan just randomly no it just (laughs) happened just literally boom and then I I remember I posted a few things after that because I think it was it was good for me as well because I used to take photos of books and post the book or um share a research article because my brain can be a sieve so I thought it'd be great if I could just take a photo of things upload them and then I can then scroll back through my Facebook and go oh yeah that research article I was meant to read that I just click on the link and there it is instead of me I constantly emailing myself or messaging myself with a link it just gets lost so I thought if I have one place to do it I I can't forget it surely um yeah so yeah and I posted things like that and then the interest just grew more and more and I realized that there was this gap in the market for horse owners that simply wanted accessible easy to understand information Mm -hmm. about complex areas of their horse they don't necessarily want to see an annotated full on muscle diagram with origins insertions and or, um, fibers alignments and everything like that. They actually just want to know, hang on a minute, are side reins good for my horse? Or mm. um, that is one muscle of my horse. I can see that muscle, I can feel it. And that's made it so much easier for me to understand. And um, it's massively put me in good stead because now when I go to clients and they I explain things, and for example, I have a lot of horses that have hamstring issues um if they're very hypertonic so I explain about the pelvic alignment and how that affects the hamstring and how that affects the tone and then how that will transfer into your ridden work and so many people are so grateful for the fact that I've literally just broken it down step by step and it's actually not very complicated I think it can become really overwhelming because you tell somebody you know what this horse has really tight muscles here and they go oh my god why is that bad is that me it's sad is it this go no look this is the process of things that are spiraling out of control and this is where we can stop it and then that makes it so much calmer and easier and simpler and owners think oh okay makes so much more sense I know now we can get it under control um and that's come a lot from how I've been I'm very much a problem panic ah quickly solve it but I it the whole journey of being a veterinary therapist goes right you look at the problem why you track all the way back and then you kind of peel the onions onion layers off and then you're there and then that is it's one of those processes and you can't rush it um but 100 percent, my social media journey has definitely taught me that <laughs> that's yeah I think that for those of us who spend hours on um on our Facebook pages trying mm. to get it right um you've just made us incredibly jealous <laughs> <laughs> oh no I don't mean to do that <laughs> No, like that's how, I mean, that's how it works, right? That's how social media works. So, but I I think that there really is like horse owners just want information. They love it. More than, I don't know, more than any other people that I know, horse people are like, tell me everything and just finding information on their own about all kinds of interesting things, not always good information. So it's really nice Mm. to have 
um, yeah, simplified, straightforward, to the point, um, not too much detail. That's also mm. good. Like one of the things I love about ha having a, a Facebook profile is to say, um, to really dive into a topic and to go deep, right? Mm. So I go the opposite way and I go as much information as I can get. And then I put it all into one big thing and I'm like, okay, now I understand. And then yeah. I should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah it's very interesting hey mm. um and how i mean matt like managing that presence must take a lot of your time how do you balance that with working with seeing patients oh yeah so basically just don't sleep that's the only advice i can give i mean just don't just be just become nocturnal um no i'm only joking it is incredibly heavy um but i think i prepared myself well because I started with it I haven't mm -hmm. had to develop it as I've also developed a client base and you it's a lot of pressure as you're starting a business and then starting your social media account and then trying to build everything out up because I started before I kind of got myself into a routine I kind of like understood what posts I was going to put out what sort of plans I had mm -hmm. um yeah I kind of had a little bit of a routine with it um and it it's become easier over the years I used to sit there and think Mm -hmm. okay I need to put a post out not an idea what I'm going to post um and then sit there I think really really hard about it and then I soon came to the conclusion that if I have to sit and think that hard about a social media post it's not organic and it's not it's, there's no point in me posting it mm -hmm. so now um my mind goes at about a thousand miles an hour all the time so what I tend to do is I come up with random ideas I think I'm just driving or I'm riding go that is a great idea for a post I'll jot it down in my phone and then mm -hmm ideally I try and sit down at some point and make all the posts um or at least get all the photos together or get all the written information together and then I can just think okay I'll save in the Instagram draft section or something and then I wake up in the morning and I just go right that sounds like a good one to post there I'll be honest quite often I've woken up and go you know what I feel like posting a quote today and I prepared nothing it's high five it's like half five in the morning and um I just think you know what the quotes be really, really good and I just come up with an idea of a general quote refine the words a little bit post it out and there I am um I think that I, I think if you tend to plan it too much mm -hmm. you've got to kind of follow the trends if you plan it too much sometimes you've missed the boat the boat sails mm -hmm. so I think you've got to be able to have a you when you post something you've got to be 100 percent confident in it you, it's got to be organic from you mm -hmm. um and the management side of things, it takes a long time to do all of that type of post scheduling and, and all the graphics and your colour schemes and everything like that. Um, so I try and make my life as easy as possible by having, um, I use Canva, so I have everything set up on there as templates. And then, like, if I, like I say, I wake up at half five in the morning, go, oh, I want to post a quote at seven. Um, I can just go to my Canva template, write the quote. There we go. Um, so I think it makes it a lot easier in that respect, having some things planned out, um, mm -hmm. and easy, easy to access. It's not, especially when you have quite a few followers, it's not easy to continuously put content out. Um, it was actually a bit easier when I was studying because you can feel like you can put some, you can put regular information out because you're constantly doing things. As you start working, seeing clients, you come to home at the end of the day, you still got a lot more of admin to do. Um, but I think I just I think you've got to try and just if you're passionate about it, I believe if you're passionate about it, you'll make time for it and it will happen mm -hmm. and it will be effortless and you won't think, oh, mm -hmm. I've got to do that. Or I've never at any point, I don't know even how many years I've been running it now, it's about three years, the MI account. Um, but I don't think at any point I thought, oh, I've got to post something. Um, <laughs> it, I, 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 it's bizarre. I've never thought, oh, I've got to think about something to post. I've always thought right, you know what people would like to see a quote or you know what today I feel like I really need to pick me up maybe somebody else needs it so then you do a little bit of a motivational post or you do a, everybody wants something like that the horse industry can be a little bit high pressure sometimes so it's about selecting your post just I think just I keep on saying it but just be organic about things um and if you're a type of person that maybe struggles with doing it with planning and finding time for it then set yourself some portion of the day so like from 12 until I don't know 4 p.m 
where you sit down and you just brainstorm because I guarantee it, your mind will just flow with ideas and you can just brainstorm just put literally just put down words and things and then think to yourself what actually do I want to research what do I want to look more into because the post then that you do is going to benefit you and it's going to benefit so many other people because guarantee yeah. if you want to look into more myofascial release techniques some other physio is out there thinking the exact same thing but they also don't have the time so they yeah. might come across your post and go oh that's really good that will then improve their practice so it's kind of this whole like sort of vicious cycle in the best possible way. Um, <laughs> so I think just sit down, first step, sit down, brainstorm, get a few ideas together, set up your templates. Um, or if you want to go down the video route, videos are quite, I mean, not it's not down to everybody's taste, but if it's easier for somebody to sit down and do a YouTube video and then post that and just sit there talking at the camera, then, then do that. You don't have to necessarily worry about making a pretty post and doing it in that way mm. or writing a really long blog post because quite frankly if I see a really really long blog post I'm not gonna read all of it I'm gonna look at probably read the first paragraph and then you pick out the bits that you do want to read so then you know make it maybe write your long blog post and then shorten it <laughs> so don't worry about putting out really complicated really long posts that are going to take all your energy to write um just make it just make it light-hearted to begin mm-hmm. with and then eventually your, your your passion takes over and the long post will come out um mm-hmm. And then you can just go from there. I absolutely love it. That's fantastic advice. And I really love that you, that you enjoy um, mm. yeah, creating posts, engaging, engaging with people. And it's that, like you said, it's that cycle of just giving back to your community, mm. having them give back to you. And it's always learning from each other. And, and that is, yeah, that is p- very much part of the online presence that I love as well. Mm. Just being able to, give back and receive so much from from the people around us um so you have this crazy social media presence and you have a lot of clients yeah and you have an amazing horse how do you find time for him how like are you getting to do as much riding as you want to and need to be doing so I think if I had your standard horse maybe a horse that was okay with maybe being ridden a few times a week and lightly worked that would be fine but because I have incredibly sensitive demanding horse um he takes a lot of my time so it is very difficult and I riding wise I try and set time away to to ride or groundwork or pole work or something like that because it is very important to him and um because he's so sensitive and because his body is, is being very weak from when he came over from Spain, I do have to put a lot of time and effort. And if I do slack off a little bit, like the last few weeks, I've been incredibly busy. I've been quite tired. Um, so he has taken a bit of a back burner, um, especially as I have my saddle fit checked, all these things kind of happen. Um, so I think, oh, it's okay. He's off a little bit. So, but then I come back to it and he's not hundred percent happy. He's like, look, you've left me. So it does keep me in a quite a strict routine of having to say, you know what, I need to be able to obviously see clients and work in that way. I need to be able to have my social media accounts and keep that going because I love doing that. But above everything, he is my baby. I love that horse more than anybody knows. He, <laughs> I tell my boyfriend all the time, the horse will always come first. <laughs> he is well aware. Um, and my family are well aware of it as well. So he always comes first. And um, I try and plan my days I have previously had I've had him on DIY livery it's been very difficult um because he's so sensitive to handle so I have been going up sort of three times a day and riding in between clients um and doing an evening check on him and everything like that um but luckily the new yard that I'm at I can have someone bring him in for me in the middle of the day so that I can either ride in the morning get all the jobs done he's then brought in and I can go and do the evening check so it's made a massive difference having some help Mm -hmm. um but it is, it is most definitely a challenge trying to get that balance. Um, mm. But I think if I don't have it, I do notice that I'm not as refreshed. Riding mm. is really, really important to me. Um, mm. And it makes his life that much better and that much more settled because when I don't ride him, I think he does seem to get, he does seem to get a little bit, thinks I've, he does seem to have abandoned him. He likes to have a job to do. Um, and in the mornings, if I go down and I go, right, here's a saddle or here's your lunge line. He sometimes is all like, oh, I'm going out, I'm going out the field. 
And then he sees that and he goes, oh, okay. And he'll stand there, eat his hay nut. Right, I'm ready, I'm in the zone. And he does get really excited. He does really, really, he loves his work. And it's that that keeps me quite regimented and go, yeah. you know what, I, I, I work more than full-time hours, um, but I, I do need mihi time <laughs> as well. Um, so I tend to ride, my preference is to ride either first thing in the morning or in the middle of the day when it's when it's this time of year when it's getting a bit warmer because he likes the heat um yeah. but my tip would be ride first thing in the morning it is a it is a bugger to get up pretty early and I'll be honest in winter I don't really do it an awful lot but I normally wake up in the morning I'll go sort him out ride him he goes out in the field for the day and then I do my yard jobs and then I start work um <laughs> and then I'll just go down in the evening and sort him out and give him a groom and stuff like that um but it is, it is very difficult. I think I have to be quite strict on my time, but also when things get busy, other things have to take a little bit of a back burner and then it swings and roundabouts really. Yeah, yeah. I really love that you said that you need it as well to like to feel refreshed because that's yeah. also what I find is that um, when, I, when I don't get to spend time with my horses, when I don't get to train and work and ride, then I just, I start spiraling. So I love that you've said that that um, spending time with your horses is like refreshes you because I find that as well. Like I have to have that time at least, I mean, at the very least, like four times a week, if not every day mm. that I get to just spend time in training um, yeah. and thinking and working in that place. And um, I'm, the, I'm the other way. I love to do it in the evenings when I've done everything that I need to do oh. for the day. But I find that if I go in the morning, the weight of my day is hanging on my shoulders and oh, then really? I'm like, focused here. Yeah, oh, sure. That's really interesting. My whole to-do list is like, mm -hmm. I need to get it all out of the way and oh. feel like now I can be here in this moment. Yeah, crazy. Oh, see, by the end of the day, I'm toast. So really? the thought of getting on, <laughs> it's very rare that it's normally only if the weather's been really bad it's nice weather I'm like right I'll get on but it's very odd is that me here is in his very odd routine of being ridden in the morning or at lunchtime and if I ride him in the evening he's like no 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 my dinner's due um and he'll be very odd to ride he'll work he'll feel very strange like he's constantly saying to me mummy 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 what are you doing what are you doing get off you know he'll be trying and then all of a sudden you see his ear flip back like wait is free? what we're we doing like, it's, this is chill time so it happens very odd rarely if I have no time that I have to ride in the evening um yeah. but normally I'm so tired I'm, I'm such like it's from about six o'clock I start winding down my body clock starts mm -hmm. going a bit slower so I think I start preparing for bed a little bit too early <laughs> so yeah that's why I tend to ride in the morning I find it I think I can kind of block out the day a bit easier because I haven't started it yet so mm -hmm. I block it out right focus on that now that's done out of the way horse is happy right yeah. now I can work if I know he's not happy and then I'm, I go to work and I'm like oh gosh he might be stressed or yeah. <laughs> it's awful it's awful <laughs> oh my goodness what are they doing to us <laughs> I know I know they do they have an unreal control over our lives <laughs> yes absolutely so okay so that's fantastic uh, you've recently started doing some webinars why did yeah. you do that? like why did you step into that space and how have you been finding it hmm. so I had so much interest for webinars and further content um so like you say about the management side of things I've pretty much been only doing posts and blog posts but I did one Q&A video and loads of people said they really enjoyed it. Um, and I was finding by doing the post that I couldn't, uh, it was only so much I could say without going into quite a lot of detail. And I'd always get messages after I'd posted something asking about more detail because their horse would have X, Y, Z issues. So I thought it'd be really interesting for me to sit down. And I also got a lot of questions about me here. I think a lot of people are in the same boat because me, he was very difficult when he came over from Spain. I think a lot of people have difficulty with their horses but not a lot of that experience is shared online um you see horses that are really good at pole work and that's what you want to achieve but you don't see the beginning stage of actually yeah. just do three poles on a 20 meter circle and aim for the middle of them <laughs> and hope that they do that and that they don't find that overwhelming um and I thought I had so many questions about me here so many questions about sort of the groundwork that I do and the work that I've done with me so I thought 
uh, the easiest thing for me to do would be to do a webinar because then people can ask questions I thought if I do a YouTube video I'm going to have the exact same problem where people then can't ask questions so I thought a good start off would be to do a webinar and um I was pretty I, I wouldn't say I was awfully nervous but you know like it's the sort of the, the initial thing with running up to it I was so excited putting all the slides together I thought it was great oh yeah everybody's gonna love that um I was creating all the diagrams I thought everybody is gonna think that's great because it's basically a level up from everything that I post on social media and um I knew everybody was going to benefit from it and then it got to the day and I thought mm, this is quite overwhelming because I'd sold sort of 150 tickets and it was I thought if these 150 people turn up I'm going to be like a bit because when you're on social I have a lot of followers and things but you don't see them all you just post them and you go <laughs> and yeah. you kind of reply to a few comments I don't think I understand the immensity of my my platform I don't really think I seem to understand it I don't really understand the the, the expanse of it um so when I saw so many people have bought tickets I had to stop sales because I thought I'm uh, this is I've got to keep it to a limited number um for the sake of of me really um so I was so happy that it completely sold out which was great and um I set it up and I had so many of my clients join me because I speak a lot to my clients and they were like it'd be really good just like have something just to look back on so I thought you know what webinar would be good for them as well so put the webinar together that was to do on um posture and my journey with me so I spoke about um kind of how you can change your horse's posture what negative posture to look for and that's kind of when you're working them when you're doing pole work with them um when you're doing your stretches and things like that things to look for and then I showed you me here from the very beginning all the way up to now uh two years later and showed that actually you see him now go for poles beautifully but in the beginning he would knock them over and bolt because he touched one and then would panic so you've got to think, it's, it, you've got to start at the beginning, you've got to start somewhere. And I think sometimes it can be very overwhelming, especially sometimes if you're given a book, like read this book, it's going to be great. And honestly, the information in some of these books is amazing, fantastic. But I've recommended books to owners and they come back to me and say, it's great. I've looked at the photos because I find it really overwhelming, the fact that I have to now have that responsibility and do that with my horse. And I completely understand because I felt the same with me here. I thought, he's relying on me to put his body and his mind in a better place and mm. that's a lot of pressure so I thought you need to have some sort of progress some sort of way to follow that's simple to go okay you start here you look for this that's how you know it's bad that's how you know you get attention and then from your vet and physiotherapist your vet etc and then when you go from there you can address those issues and once you've addressed them you now have the tools to know one how to address them and two when it actually looks good and when to recognize it and when to praise um and I got so much feedback from it it was amazing it was so lovely so many people came across and, and joined on and uh, we had a really really long Q&A session at the end where people sent in issues they've been having with their horses and it was good because then I could talk through it systematically and say look don't worry this is what we do and we can sort it out and I had endless and emails and messages after that saying I've either watched the recording or I was on there live and it was just really I, I really well explained and I thought oh that's really nice to hear because I try and be quite concise but also in depth but also try not to make it too overwhelming I think that really really resonated with quite a few people um everybody loved it so I'm gonna do another one I'm gonna try and do them semi-regularly um I think it's a good way to kind of go into more detail about the posts that I do and also to make it it's a bit more of a nice thing you can just sit there and watch me and watch the presentation <laughs> and listen to me ramble on because that is something I do an awful lot of um and it's a lot it's a bit more lighthearted than having to read through a post a bit so yeah it's very enjoyable <laughs> and, and like you say it gives you that really that added benefit of being able to answer their questions and mm. go into a little bit more detail with them about their cases and other people benefit from that as well so it, yeah like you relate to what someone else's horse is going to, through because you've mm. gone through or are going through something similar and so that's yeah. really very beneficial I really love it yeah um, so are you planning anything else interesting going forward oh, I've got a few things in the pipeline that mm -hmm. I can't talk about yet as per as always always the case people always get annoyed I get annoyed when I see other people saying that oh, why can't you just tell me but that's the case <laughs> with me now I've got a few things I'm working on um that are in the pipeline that are really exciting 
um, which is great. And then I've got a few things I want to do myself, uh, but I kind of have no time. I've <laughs> got no time. So um, essentially what I'm planning on doing is I want to be able to provide this type of content more. And um, I have, it's never been a desire for me to grow the social media page anymore. It's kind of, it's super, super like way superseded my expectations of what I expected to achieve. Um, so it will never be to kind of promote the social media page more. It's never going to be to do anything like that and get more followers. Um, but I would like to be able to provide a bit more content for them, for my followers, mm-hmm. because um, because I've been so busy, it does take a bit of a back burner sometimes. So I would love to be able to provide more webinars. I'm also thinking about producing, I've had a lot of interest in it, a patron page where people can subscribe and okay. then I can provide that a little bit more additional content um in more depth so I'm going to be doing uh I'm planning it all at the moment it's all a bit mad um but I'm planning a lot of things where it's going to be like anatomy for horse owners and um, it'd be great for start- studying students as well because it will give you sort of an insight um as well um live Q&A sessions I get a lot of messages pretty much daily asking questions about people's horses and um, it would be great if everybody could just sign on and you can just send me all your questions and I could just go up because I, I guarantee it, that that one question is probably what 500 other people also have a question about. So yeah. be a live Q&A, send in your, your questions and we can discuss them. Um, I've had a lot of people interested in how I've got, I have changed me, his posture and the groundwork side of things. Mm-hmm. So I'm planning on doing a lot of videos on that and how you can kind of mix f- physiotherapy with your mm-hmm. groundwork and what muscles to look at and things like that um, to promote that your sort of ridden side of things or your groundwork side of things. Um, and then also provide little things for horse owners to do and exercises in terms of kind of, I recently put a post out about sort of how to assess your horse's neck muscles. Not that you need to go in and do, you know, your level palpations and you go any deep, but you just need to shut your eyes and have a little feel and just, just tune yourself into your horse's body and think, actually you know what really been struggling with the left rein for example and then you might have a little fear and go oh the right side of his neck is is really tight because that would then explain it because then he can't flex to left he can't stretch that right side of his neck um and then that's where the struggle is coming from but and then as you tune into your horse's body you can kind of realize these things and then you can communicate more back to your physiotherapist back to your vet your massage therapist everything like that um and it also puts a little bit more confidence into horse owners to go, I'm not going to block out the fact that horses are uncomfortable and wait yeah. for something bad to happen. But they become a little bit more in tune. They become happy and enthusiastic about how, making, improving the performance in their horse. And it boosts the confidence. I think a lot of the time people do get knocked down on social media if your horse isn't perfect. Mm-hmm. I've had it as well. Like, if your horse isn't in the perfect frame and you're not sitting perfectly, you're not doing great by them. Whereas actually it's a constant up and down cycle and that's absolutely okay. Um, and we just need to support each other on this journey. And I think that's kind of what I wanted to do with the patron page is give a little bit more of the scientific background, go into research papers, um, <clears throat> do things like that. And then also go on the fun side of things of doing all the groundwork and showing me here a bit more. Um, so that's kind of my plan on that front. Um, and then it's wherever the wind or water takes me, wherever, wherever I'm in me and my little boat, wherever I decide to go. <laughs> um, because it seems to be that I, it's just madness. I seem to be getting one opportunity after another. And I'm so, so grateful for it. Um, and I just, I would, uh, yeah, I'd absolutely love just to continue progressing and it'd be great. So um, working with other people is, good, is a massive um, dream of mine. And, gold and everything so that would be great for doing more collaborations and yeah, yeah that's kind of I, I kind of uh, it's a bit difficult for me to kind of comprehend to be honest because it's amazing it's a dream come true um yeah. but I love it and I think that's kind of my plan going forward is to, to continue providing for horse owners in a way that is accessible and mm-hmm. makes complex information easy to understand yeah 
I really love that. And I love that you're going to be going a little bit more into groundwork because I think there are so many people who just have no idea what to, mm. what to do with their horse if they're not in the saddle. And, um, and I don't know, like I'm not a brilliant rider, so I'm much more <laughs> effective when I have my feet on the ground. Oh, um, no. saddle. I'm like, we need to know exactly how to do the job before I get on you and off. You know? <laughs> I love groundwork and I think it's amazing I, I'm sad I'm sad when I when I see people who just they don't know how to do it and they don't know how to like just how amazing it is to have that conversation with your yeah. horse in front of you and you can see every response and it just mm. I love it so I'm, I'm really glad to teach more people yeah week. absolutely <laughs> absolutely I think if it wasn't for me he I would have understood the mm -hmm. importance of groundwork um, but the reason, the groundwork was the reason why I picked up on me, he's stifle weakness issue. Um, just because you're on the ground, you can see everything. Um, but I mean, when I first got him, he was pretty much in very inconsistent or even unridden work for probably up to about eight months because he was so difficult. And it was the groundwork that built that trust and that connection to then progress them to the ridden work and then make that ridden work not easy but supple and comfortable and not forceful um so he's willing as well so he has been the main teacher for me in this one I have to give him credit for that <laughs> I think that's fair that's very fair mm. I was one who um is my very much my teacher so oh they are difficult but they are the best <laughs> They are the best, yes. I actually, I had a conversation with my dad about him last night and my dad says to me, I'm not going to expect much from him because he won't meet my expectations. <laughs> You're terrible, of course you will. <laughs> oh, no. It's fine, so it's fine. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. You'll always be there for him. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh, Kelly, it's been really awesome chatting to you. I think you've get, given such great advice now to, um, yeah, to those that are in the industry that... Um, especially in terms of social media, which is a weakness for many of us. It's definitely not our thing. So thank you so much for your advice and for your time. Um, no problem. I'm, I'm chatting to you. Yes, it's been so lovely. It's really nice to kind of, I haven't really done this before, so it's been really nice to talk about it. Um, yeah, definitely. I loved it. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> If you enjoyed this podcast, please hit the subscribe button so you get notified every time I load a new podcast. And please, if you get a moment, head over to Stitcher or iTunes and leave me a review. It's a really lonely job being a podcaster. And so the only time I get to hear from you or know that you're out there is when I get a review. And know that I read every single one of your reviews. So to those of you that have left reviews, I want to say a very very big thank you every time we get a review it really helps to get the vet knee rehabilitation podcast out there to all the vet rehabbers all over the world all right vet rehabbers so if you are looking for more continued education in the field of vet knee rehabilitation head over to onlinepetout.com go be awesome guys